This is The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll head straight to looking at the papers this morning. Chris Kane, the one who joins us. Chris, it's good to have you join us this morning. My people, my people, good morning. Our, 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 our governor, our governor, should we say that? How am I doing safe well? Oga, it's not easy, yo. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, but we're, we're living by grace, you know. Uh, Lagos is another thing altogether these days with, with the fuel situation. I don't know if you have some there you can you can share with me and lend me some I won't mind. No problem. I will. All right. <laughs> Let's quickly take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning and see what the leadership's got for us. It talks about last minute appointment, how governors set booby traps for successors. These are boldly written on the leadership. It's wasteful height of political riscality, says stakeholders and CSOs. Appointment in order, government's continuum, or government is a continuum. Governors insist, really. Yesterday was quite interesting on the social space. I mean, looking at all of the reactions and the thoughts. 2023 polls will hold despite attacks on our offices. That's what INEC is saying. But we hope that that does not affect, you know, the outcome of the elections or the entire process. Abuja Kaduna, real well secured, ministers assures passengers. And beware of thieves. Federal government warns Nigerian travelers to the United States and Europe. I mean, that's what uh, I and Kofi had been talking about before this time. Qatar 2022, Ghana beats South Korea 3 2, and Cameroon uh, draw 3 3 with Sabian. Uh, that's what it is. Quite interesting yesterday. Uh, a lot of people were happy, especially Africans. It was, you know, was a great one to look at. But that's it on the leadership. All right, let's move on from the leadership, of course, to uh, the next uh, paper we have on our table. We'll do uh, The Guardian, which has the following stories, headlines there. Cyber crimes raise concerns for 30.2 trillion naira monthly e-payments. The writers of that headline Nigerians count losses as forces go get sophisticated. Empty bank accounts. And I think in recent time, people have been complaining of their bank accounts being empty and the banks doing nothing about it. Dearth of IT staff worsens recovery time in banks. NCC issues over nine security alerts since the beginning of 2022. Experts seek review of Cybercrime Act 2015 kick against plea bargain. Read the story for more. Quite interesting, uh, if you ask me. Senate President Lawan loses court of appeal at court of appeal. Uh, is it time he hangs his 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 uh, gloves up and throws in the towel? Attacks on facilities troubling won't deter us from conducting credible polls. Einek vows is coming after a fire wreaked havoc uh, on the Ebony office of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Appeal court reinstates a day to others in Ogun. Beware of politicians craving for power. CJN warns judicial officers. Adele Kei suspends OSEAC chairman, six others, dethrones three monarchs, and we have enough food for Nigerians, Agri Minister Bos. All right, thank God uh, for that. Well, away from that, we have the punch, and quickly, APC Assembly tackle Adele Kei, governor sacks 12,000 workers. APC Fumes says governor's court endless. I take that again. APC Fumes says governor courting endless litigations, agitations, distraction. State of Oshun backed by law. Governor's action illegal, says assembly. Sat local government chairman head to court and PDP backs a delicate action. Hits APC. So it's really going to be difficult. But in whose interest is all of this? I mean, that's one big question we need to ask. Is it in the interest of the people or in the interest of various political parties? Another caption says, foreign NGOs, fintech firms linked to terrorism financing. Hmm. No candidate for national award. Nominees fail exams. 50% materials deployed. Bond offices threat or threaten polls, that's what INEC says, 50% materials deployed and bond offices 
uh, threatened polls. But just saying, regardless, we're going to have the elections. Asu wants of new crisis, six intervention. 10,000 resident doctors remaining in Nigeria. Contractor suspends Lagos Ibadan road construction, resumes January. So it's like they're going for, you know, the festivity. Kanu APC chair courts with uh, 367 PVCs jailed. Wow. That's the much we can take this morning on the punch. Well, let's move on to the next uh, paper there. Uh, the Nation newspaper has the following headlines on its front page. A delicate hits Ocean State with a gale of sacred vessels. Uh, I'm sure we we'll have no surprises at uh, the way the nation put it. It says, uh, workers, three monarchs, OSEC chair, others fired. 30 permanent secretaries uh, demoted. Lawmakers draw battle line with governor of a state named Anthem Logo, others. Uh, Supreme Court overwhelmed by 6,884 cases. Uh, CJ and Ariola laments. Beware of money, passport theft in US, UK. Government warns Nigerians Ghana, Morocco likely to carry Africa's flag to round of 16. This comes after Black Stars uh, got Africa's second victory, no, Africa's third victory at the World Cup. <laughs> I it know was, you're very excited. It was a relief. Let, let us rest. I saw Senegal win, I saw Morocco win, and then the Black Stars of Ghana. It, it, it's a good no, one but for after, Africa. After, you know, after the yes. first encounter. Yes, it's a good one for Africa. That 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 first match wasn't great. Let's go on. Uh, Lagos selects three bidders for fourth million bridge. That's two point five billion dollar fourth million bridge. All right, maybe a long last the battle shall end. Uh, Chris Kenewalu, let's start with this one on the front page of um, the Nation. I mean, uh, they 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 are looking at the other side of it. Maybe you know, looking at the side of the opposition uh, in Ocean State now, opposition in Ocean State and their complaints. What are your thoughts on uh, the the pronouncements and the moves by the dancing governor, who has now become the dancing senator, who has now become the fighting governor, uh, Adeleke, who is you know fired uh, twelve thousand workers appointed by the outgoing governor of Washington State, Oye Tola, twelve thousand of them. Uh, he also sacked three monarchs, told them to vacate their palaces, and uh, ordered the police to go there and seal it off and occupy those palaces. He also reversed the appointment of 30 permanent secretaries who were, uh, you know, appointed or promoted by Oye Tola's government barely 48 hours before he left the seat. And finally, he suspended the chairman and members of the Ocean State Independent Electoral Commission. Your thoughts on, on this? Yes, uh, Kofi, uh, good morning to all those watching us across the globe this morning. Um, the or the mock a critical note. Um, the governor Adelike is no longer a dancing senator, he's now a dancing governor uh, because barely 24 hours after he was sworn in, you could see him dancing uh, uh, before an audience that he was trying to address. Uh, dancing Buga by Kiss Daniel. Uh, that video is on viral, gone viral on, uh, on social media. Um, so, but I think that. Uh, Dancing uh, to be a little bit of past. It should not get much serious, and what, that is what he's doing. Um, let's start with the issue of uh, workers, 12,000 workers. Um, it is obvious that um, the, the outgoing or the outgoing administration of APC in our true state tried to create some kind of bump and try to uh, put some uh, wages uh, on the way. And uh, laid out so many landmines for Governor Deleke, who was to take over from there. And part of those uh, activities was that various appointments made in the wee hours of the eve of the governor, the former governor leaving. For, uh, normally, as it's supposed to be, they are supposed to be a former hand. Um, that is what the constitution says, that is what's supposed to obtain. The outgoing governor, irrespective of whether who is coming in is an opposition um, uh, from the opposition or not, is supposed to have a handover note detailing everything that happened, what is uh, to be done or what is left to be done. That is how to bet. They have a big brother in another a politician in Donald Trump uh, who did the same uh, when uh, current governor, uh, sorry, current president of the United States. Uh, uh, took over, Donald Trump did not hand over to uh, 
a man that has said this. So uh, we can leave that. But back to the point. Uh, what needs to be done, and I believe should have been done, instead of Atrisac, is probably a sus the suspension of the 12,000 uh, workers and setting up of uh, a panel to look at the rationale behind those uh, uh, appointments. And if they find it uh, in their wisdom that um, those recruitment was wrongly done, then uh, they have a right to recommend the governor to fire them. That, to me, would have been a better approach. Suspension and uh, without salary, and after the panel, uh, uh, also, so is before, then the governor can take a decision. But it's the governor, he has the right to do whatever he likes, as it were. Secondly, is the issue of the 30 permanent secretary that was we are also appointed few uh, few days before uh, Governor Oyetola left. These are people he did not appoint in his four years, just few days before he left, he decided to. Uh, appoint them and uh, give joy to the boys. So I totally also agree with uh, Governor uh, Delek on that. Then third is the issue of the uh, three monarchs. They were suspended. Uh, he said they were suspended. He has not sacked them as most of our colleagues are, are, are pushing out. They are suspended them. He said their palace should be taken over while he um, is going to look into that issue. Then the one, the big one also, is the issue of uh, state of option. The question you ask, does the governor have executive power to do that? Yes, he does, because um, the issue of executive order is a, is a right that is enshrined in the Constitution. Don't forget President Muhammad Buhari, also sometime this year and last year, also issued some executive orders and uh, um, over certain issues. But it is the constitutional issues, I also believe that he can take it to the state assembly for consideration. But so far, so good. The man seems to want to, he doesn't want to jump himself into this, uh, into this uh, shark infested water that the APC have created for him. And um, I think that um, he just has to take what decision he has to take. But uh, on the other side of it, Governor Yetla has also come out to say that he left 14 billion naira in the purpose of Oshun State for the incoming government. Okay. That means yeah, also yeah. Chris, so before we move on, I mean, uh, the new governor has also announced, you know, just by his word, that he's reversing the, um, uh, the, the pronouncement or the name of Washington State that was previously known from the days of Arebe Shola since uh, 2012. You know, he's reversing that uh, to, to Ocean State. He also said he's um, changing the slogan uh, of 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 the name, uh, of, sorry, of the state, you know, changing the slogan of the state, and um, the Ocean State House Assembly has come out to tell him, you can't do that, you know, just simply say we are no longer known as Ocean State of Ocean, we are now known as Ocean State. Uh, the slogan that we had, uh, I'm changing that slogan to another slogan because he's saying that in 2012, this state of Ocean, as it's called today, was enshrined into law, it was assented to law in 2012 by the then government after the bill was passed by the state house of assembly that's number one the the the, the, the flag of the state the crest of the state the symbol of the state and the slogan of the state are all you know pro products of of law so what do you say to that is, is this governor um showing us that he has the dictatorial tendencies and is not ready to do things according to law or you think it's just uh, an oversight or maybe a mistake I, I think I mentioned that before. I said what has to be determined is, does the governor have uh, uh, a, a constitutional right to issue executive order? And I said that as a president already, the president, uh, federal, you, you know that we run a, a federal system. The president did that um, within the federal level, issued uh, some uh, executive orders which were obeyed. And um, the governor is issuing, he issues six executive orders on his presumption. What needs to be determined is whether he has the right to issue those um, executive orders. If it's within his right constitutionally, then all well and good. If the state House of Assembly feel that he has uh, stepped on their, on their fundamental rights or constitutional, he has breached the constitution, all they need to do is to go to court to back it up. But what it is, is what it is. The governor has issued uh, six executive orders. And that is what it should be. If the state has assembly feel that uh, he has stepped out of um, his right, then they should go to court and question that and challenge that. Don't forget that uh, I see a lot of 
um, issue arising between the governor and the state. In the state house, I think the state have 26 lawmakers, if I'm not mistaken, and two of them are of the APC. Oh. All right. All right. Uh, I think we can move on to the next next story now. Um, Chris, Chris, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, then. Let, let's quickly look at the Punch newspaper. On this, it talks about security, uh, foreign NGOs and fintech firms linked to terrorism financing. Your thoughts on this one? That's a worrisome one. That's a worrisome one. So, um, I think proper investigation should be carried out. And uh, if it's true that um, that is the situation, then our security agencies should do the needful. Uh, we cannot afford to have people uh, supporting such acts in Nigeria. We already, Nigeria is already having serious uh, insecurity challenges across uh, the country. It's no longer limited to the northeast or northwest, the southwest, south, south, southeast, and every part of the country. Now, don't forget that some countries also raise adversary. Uh, uh, report or statement warning their citizens not to find themselves in some part of the country. Um, so, uh, every attempt for any organization to seem to be involved with such that, then uh, the, the rightful decision should be taken as quickly as possible. But my problem with all this is that all those that were arrested for terrorist acts, for belonging to some groups, Boko Haram and the rest of them, I have not seen any of them prosecuted in the past few years, and that is why the problem for me. We cannot just be making pronouncements and making arrests, as we said, only for us to just keep them in the cooler. They need to be prosecuted, and they need to be punished for the acts. We cannot continue to reward such um, um, acts uh, and thereby emboldening some of these people that have recently, as I've said several on this, on this uh, forum, um, I heard that some people were even released from Kriki prison about one round one uh, Boko Haram um, kingpins. That is not doing us good. So I think this issue should be thoroughly investigated and Nigerians should be uh, given the opportunity of knowing the conversations. Yeah, so, but, but another issue is always, you know, the secrecy with all of this. And, of course, this is a government report. So you see NGOs, banks, and what have you, are non uh this uh, non-governmental organization, foreign non-governmental organization responsible for this or in connection with this. But do you think that we're sincere? Because it feels like it's about we don't get to put out the details the way it should be. Uh, how does that even help yeah. the fight of terrorism? That's what I said in my last statement. I said Nigeria should be made, should be, uh, those information should be brought to the full so that Nigerians will know the outcome of investigation. That is what we call this seen in the past where uh, we get in, uh, investigate those issues are investigated today Nigerians don't get to hear of it let you be shocked that after today in the last in the next 48 hours this same news will die up and we continue as if nothing has happened all right let's uh, look at more stories are coming from the papers i think uh, the next one would like to take uh just give me a second because i lost my script there Okay, so let's look at um, the the fact that the Supreme Court, um, the the Chief Justice of Nigeria, uh, uh, yesterday we had an opportunity to interface, just bring this up as a topic with our guest, uh, first major conversation for the day, um, his speech at that uh, uh, banquet in his honor uh, by Yesumike, Governor of River State. But on the front page of the Guardian, uh, the CJN, part of the things he said in one of the speeches he made was that. Um, Politicians, sh uh, judges should not uh, hop up with politicians and should be aware uh, of, of what politicians have up their minds. And the Guardian has highlighted that beware of politicians' cravings for power, uh, CJN warns judicial officers. And I think there's a line in his speech where he said, either in, in uh, Oyo State when he was received by his state or in River State, that you know politicians and judicial workers need not be you know, go hand in hand together. So what, what are your thoughts on this in the light of the controversy that trailed his uh, River State speech? The Chief Justice of Nigeria should lead by example. And uh, it's not a question of uh, do what I say, uh, uh, do what I say, and uh, he continues to do what he He was captured uh, on video where he made those statements supporting the G5 uh, softly. 
and also saying that uh, he was happy that uh, the governor of the state, uh, Shea Makin, the uh, member of the G5, that in this uh, is very, very unbecoming of a man of that uh, magnitude and nature, the chief justice of the federation, and just like so many other judicial uh, heads, uh, judges, and justices, um, are supposed to be above board and not supposed to be partisan. Um, probably that was a sleep, should avoid that in the future, because um, that could that will be very, very detrimental as we move into the 2023 election. We are, we will see instances where lawyers uh, will now start when the case gets to Supreme Court, where the lawyers may ask the cite this case and the uh, situation and ask the Chief Justice to recuse himself, rescue himself from, um, from being part of the panel that will determine some of these issues. And that is not good enough. So, uh, in as much as it's admonishing, Judicial officers to be non partisan, he also should do everything humanly possible to stay away from politics and such comments in the future. And that's also still on, you know, the Punch newspaper. It talks about the Merit Award, the Nigerian Media Merit Award. Uh, you have um, 32 nominees for this award, and none were qualified. Should we be worried about the kind of country that we have? Well, we should be worried. It's first and foremost, you have to ask yourself, what were the criteria used to determine the 32? I have not seen it. And that is part of what we are talking about, transparency. Uh, the award committee ought to publish the criteria used in picking these 32 people. And um, it is only when we've seen that that we now know why they failed the exam. And that is exam also, which type of exam? Is it arithmetic? Is it mathematics? Is it science? Is it general knowledge? Is it some of them? Remember in the past, where some people asked to stand up and sing the national anthem and play, and they decided to pledge and they won't be able to do that. So we don't even know the type of exams that we are given. But um, it's not good enough. But um, it is, at times, you ask yourself, is that exam, does that exam in itself invalidate what they have achieved in the past or what they have done to have merited them those awards. So those are the fundamental issues. But as I said, the award committee need to publish, uh, one, the criteria for picking who they picked and reason why they were picked. And also a, a kind of exam. It's not just saying uh, they didn't pass, pass exam. What type of, of exam is that? And how come 32 eminent Nigerians enter that exam, and none of them pass the exam. Something is wrong somewhere. Something is definitely wrong somewhere. And until we get to know the full details, it's difficult for us to be able to make an informed uh, statement on such issue. All right. Chris, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, uh, for joining us this morning. We have to pull the plugs at this time and looking forward to having you with us next week. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Uh, ahead on the program, we have more discussions coming up. And of course, we'll look at uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria saying that uh, the NNPC has remitted zero dollars to it in Forex reserves. So in terms of Forex uh, 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 profits so far uh, from crude oil sales, let's call it that. What exactly is the situation? Labadee Shomi joins us ahead. Please stay.